hey guys welcome back to my channel so today's video is one that you guys requested in today's video i'm going to show you how to calculate your safe days your unsafe days your fertile days and your non-fertile days if you are trying to conceive and if you have an irregular cycle or a varying cycle length so in my last video in this video that i posted i talked about how to calculate your ovulation days safe days and fertile days if you have a regular normal and consistent menstrual cycle and then there were a lot of questions about what about us women who have irregular cycles and those of us whose cycles keep changing from month to month like this month you have 25 uh, 25 days the next cycle you have 30 days how do we keep track of ovulation how do we know when we are fertile so that we can try to conceive around that period so in this video i'm going to be answering all of that questions we are going to do the math here do the calculations and you will find out your fertile days and your best chances of conceiving if you are trying to conceive if you are new to my channel you are very welcome here my name is nosa and on my channel i make motherhood and lifestyle videos i also share fertility tips that have helped me to conceive my babies if you are interested in videos like this then of course subscribe and be a part of my youtube family all right guys let's get right into it okay before we get started i just need you guys to do me a little favor please watch this video from start to finish don't skip any parts and don't don't fast forward because sometimes I see some some questions which I already answered in a video and I you know I have to repeat myself so please watch this video from start to finish if you don't have data you can continue tomorrow whenever you you refill your your data so today we are talking about irregular cycle and a varying cycle length now some of you watching me may think you have an irregular cycle but what you are experiencing is a varying cycle length so let's start from the beginning what is a regular cycle a regular cycle are periods that falls within the normal range of a cycle length what does that mean what is normal range of cycle length okay according to science if your cycle length falls within 21 to 35 days if your cycle length falls within 21 to 35 days you have a normal regular cycle okay all right now let's talk about an irregular cycle length irregular periods are periods that falls outside of the normal cycle length outside of this box right here if your period falls below 21 or above 35 then you have what is considered as irregular and, and abnormal now there are other symptoms okay there are other many symptoms of irregular cycle but we're not going to go into that today in January you, 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 you had your 28 day cycle in February guess what your period just disappeared there's no period you're not pregnant you did a pregnancy test negative then guess what your period decides to come back in the month of March after about let's say 40, 45 days so in the month of March you had a 45 day cycle look at that gap now in april you are thinking when is my period going to come is it going to be 28 days is it going to be another 40 45 days guess what your period shows up way too early and then when you calculate you had a 19 day cycle and the next one in the month of may no period in the month of june no period your period just disappears and shows up whenever it likes sometimes it comes very early sometimes it comes very late this is what is considered as an irregular cycle length the length of your cycle just keeps changing it goes below 21 it goes above 35 it is difficult for you to try to, to predict when your next period is coming and also very difficult for you to to calculate your ovulation and this is very frustrating this is very very frustrating if you're trying to conceive so if you have issues like this then you want to see a doctor okay okay so let's go on to talk about the last one on the board and that is varying cycle length a varying cycle length is different from an irregular cycle okay you can have a varying cycle length and still have a regular cycle the main thing we are looking for is this number here does your cycle fall within 21 to 35 days that is the question look at these numbers we have 26 27 30 25 26 27 the numbers are not the same but guess what is common with them they are all within within what is considered as normal and regular what you're experiencing is varying cycle length cycle length variations now this is something that i have definitely experienced in my adult life as a mom 
whenever I have a baby and I'm breastfeeding, my cycle comes to this. Before I started having kids, clockwork, normal, regular cycle length. But once I started having kids and breastfeeding, my, my period will switch. This is what I start experiencing. So this can be caused by stress. It can be caused by breastfeeding. It can be caused by the weather. Yes, my period also changes during summer and winter. I don't know. I don't know the science behind that, but there are a lot of things that can affect your body, affect your hormones and cause your cycle to switch. But if it stays within this number, 21 to 35, then you still have a normal and regular cycle length. Now we're going to use the method called a calendar rhythm method. I have my calendar drawn out here. I'll be using the month of September. And according to this method, according to the calendar rhythm method, to find your fertile days, if you want to know your fertile days, the first thing you should know is the length of your cycle, the length of your menstrual cycle. Your, your menstrual cycle starts from the first day of your period to the day before your next period starts. I already have a video on this, by the way, okay, but, but just for the purpose of this video, we're going to calculate it on this calendar right here. So, Let's say your period started on Wednesday, 2nd of September. Wednesday, 2nd of September. We're going to cycle it here. Cycle that date on your calendar. Then wait for your next period to come. So let's say your next period came on the 30th of September. You're going to cycle that date on your calendar again. We have 2nd and we have 30th. Now, this is the length of your cycle. The number of days in between all of these days in between, including the days that you bleeded, including the number of days that you bleeded, all of those days put together are, is the length of your cycle, is the full length of your menstrual cycle. So this is what we are going to do. And you have to do this on your calendar. That first day you cycled, you are going to write one. That's the first day of your period. You're going to write one. The next day will be two. The next day will be three. The next day will be four. The next day will be five. Remember, the number of days you bleeded for is irrelevant. Keep counting. The next day will be six. The next will be seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. So you're gonna stop counting here the day before your next period starts. And what does this mean? This means you have a 28 day cycle. If your period comes the next day, October 1st, that means you have a 29 day cycle. If your period comes 2nd of October, that means you have a 30 day cycle. If your period comes on the 28th of September, that means you have a 26 day cycle. So the day before your next period comes, that is when you stop counting, okay? So that is everything about the length of your cycle. So once you get the length of your cycle, the next thing you want to do is to take a data, take a record of this for six months. According to the calendar method, you need to do this for six months, whether you have regular or irregular cycle, just keep doing this for the next six months. Then after six months, put all your data out, just write it all out. So that's what I'm going to do next. Okay. So this is my six months record. This is my six months record. We're going to use it in this video. This is actually an illustration. It's not my, it's, this is not my record. Okay. Okay. So I have first day of cycle and over here I have the cycle length. So in the month of March, I had a 29 day cycle. April, I had another 29 day cycle. May, I had a 26 day cycle. June, 28 day cycle. July, I had a 30 day cycle. August, I had a 27 day cycle. And today is September 2nd, and I am right now in my current cycle, in a new cycle. Now, what do you see? What is, what is common here? These numbers are not the same, and that means I have a varying cycle length. I told you this video is for people who have varying cycle length and a regular cycle. So to calculate the first day of your fertile window, the first day that you will be, that you'll be fertile, you're going to take the shortest cycle length here, and that will be 26. Let me just say that again. You want to know your fertile window so that you can start trying to conceive during that period and increase your chances of conceiving. Now to know the first day that you will be fertile, take the shortest cycle length 
from the six months record that you have that you have gotten and for me that would be 26 so you're going to write it here 26 26 minus 18 26 minus 18 and the answer will be 8 8 I know what you're thinking I know the question you want to ask where did you get 18 from where did 18 come from so it's a long story okay I'm gonna try my best to explain it very quickly uh, I don't want this video to be too long but one thing I need you to do right now is to write these two numbers at the back of your notes 18 and 11 write 18 and 11 somewhere in your book you know at the back of your book and just leave it there so how did I get 18 now there's something called your luteal phase this is going to be a little confusing but just try to hear me out there's something called your luteal phase in your fertility it is the period after uh after it is a period after your ovulation and before your next period 14 days before your next period okay it's called your luteal phase if you get pregnant that is a period where you will find out that is a period where you do a pregnancy test and you find out now according to science your luteal phase is usually 14 days 14 days so that is why in my last video we were always subtracting 14 and to get our ovulation day but the other thing is this luteal phase it is not always 14 days sometimes it can be shorter sometimes it can be longer the standard days is 14 but sometimes it can be shorter sometimes it can be longer it can be between 11 to 18 days that is where 18 came from. It is a scientific number. It is a number given to us by experts, by science, by people who have studied a woman's body, a woman's cycle. Okay. All right. That's about it. Let's, let's move on. So that is where I got 18 from. All right. Let's go back. So 26, 26 minus 18 is eight. So you are going to count from the first day of your period, the first day of your period in September, which is September 2nd. You're going to count from there until you get eight days. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now you're going to cycle that date on your calendar. Cycle that date on your calendar. And that day is the beginning of your fetal window. Let me do it again. Let's just say we have uh, 24 days here. So let's say my shortest cycle length was 24. I'm going to say 24 minus 18 will be 6. 6. So what you're going to do is cycle 6 on your calendar. This is just another illustration, okay? Cycle that day on your calendar. You can put an X if you like. You can put a check mark. But just know that that is the beginning of your fetal window. Okay, so now that you know the beginning of your fertile window, the next thing you want to know is the end of your fertile window. When is the window closing? You are going to take the longest cycle that you have here, the longest cycle length that you have here. And for me, it will be 30. It will be July, the month of July. I had a 30-day cycle length. So you are going to write it here. 30. This time, you are going to subtract 11. 11 remember I told you your luteal phase is between is between 11 to 18 so we, we have already used 18 now we're going to use 11 so we're going to say 30 minus 11 and the answer will be 19 the answer will be 19 so let's look for day 19 on this calendar we stop counting here we stop counting on the 8 so you are going to continue 9 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Day 19 is Sunday, September 20th. That is the last day of your fertile window. So you are going to cycle that day on your calendar. Please don't get these days confused. I'm using a black pen and a red pen so that you can know the difference. Black pen is for the actual September calendar. But your menstrual cycle, I'm using a red pen to calculate it. So day 8 of your menstrual cycle is the beginning of your fertile window. And day 19 of your menstrual cycle is the end, the closing date of your fertile window. Let's just cycle all of those dates on the calendar.
you guys look at this beautiful car i drew out <laughs> so look at all these days this is the full length of your fatal window let's count how many one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so you have a 12 day fatal window 12 day window to try to conceive if you are trying to conceive now this is the other thing you are not going to ovulate every single day within these 12 days no as a woman we only ovulate or our ovaries usually release an egg just once okay just one day and that egg has about 12 to 24 hours to last in your body once the egg is released from your ovaries it goes to your fallopian tube and it's going to stay there and wait for sperm to come and fertilize it and that that waiting usually happens within 12 to 24 hours now the other good news is this sperm can stay in a woman's body in a woman's fallopian tube for three to five days so if you if you do the deed on the eighth which is the first day of your fertile window even though you're not ovulating on that day that sperm can stay in your body for one two three four five days so let's say you ovulated on on day 11 day 11 of your menstrual cycle because the sperm is already there it's going to meet with the egg and do a stain fertilize the egg and then you get pregnant that is how the science works so you want to make sure to try multiple times during this fertile window to increase your chances so if you are experiencing cycle length variation like what we have here this is how you calculate your fertile window and the same thing for those of you who have irregular cycle let me just give you guys you know some tea some things that i found out some people according to some theory some expert theory some people say this method should not be used if you have irregular cycle don't even bother to use it at all if you have a regular cycle but there are some other theories that say it's okay to use it it's okay to try it so this is what i recommend i recommend that you use this method whether it works for you or not i number one i think it will be very very good for you to have this knowledge about your body if you're able to take data like this and have that knowledge study your body monitor your cycle and just have that knowledge i think that is that is a good thing number two one thing you will notice is a pattern you will notice a pattern in your cycle if there's a long gap between your cycle or a short gap between it that is something you will find out so i will encourage you to do this method whether you have an irregular cycle or not okay and okay let us look at this calendar one more time and this is for women who are not trying to conceive if you just want to know your safe days and you are using your calendar as your contraceptive then listen to me all of these days that are not marked all of these days that are not within this umbrella of a fertile window these are your safe days you can freely have fun with your partner unprotected on those days and you have no fear of getting pregnant your chances of getting pregnant is very slim it's very low but if you are trying to get pregnant you want to take a six months record of your menstrual cycle then take the shortest month subtract 18 from the shortest month and you get an answer take the longest month and subtract 11 so whatever your answers are will be your fatal period maybe you got seven here and maybe you got 15 here in your calculation this would be your fatal period maybe you got six here and maybe you got 12 here this would six to 12 would be your fatal period so do your own calculation and whatever numbers you get that is the length of your fatal period okay i'm sure you guys have a lot of questions to ask so i already wrote down some of the questions which i think you might be you might be having right now and i'm going to answer it here in this video so the first one is am i going to always be calculating six months every time because i've told you to take a six months data so are you always going to be taking six months data every time you need to do this no you're only going to do this just once but you are going to be updating this calendar so right now we are in the month of september let me bring this down so this is september calendar we are in the month of september right now so let's say you had a 20 28 day cycle in the month of september so we are going to remove the first month erase the first month the, the first month where you started counting from and then you have one two three four five six you have your current six months okay and then by october by October, I hope you guys can see this. By October, let's say you had a 30-day cycle. 
you're going to go up again and erase and erase the first month of that current cycle because you have a new month so by november you have a 35 day cycle length you go back up again erase the first month in that six month cycle so this is what you're going to keep doing and you're going to keep having your fertile window so now that you know the full length of your fertile window if you and your partner are healthy you guys do not have any fertility issues your partner is fine his sperm is fine nothing wrong with you you don't have any diagnosis you don't have pcos you don't have a fibroid you didn't do any kind of surgery that's you know that touched your your reproductive organs if the both of you are healthy and fine then you should be able to conceive a baby within 12 months within a year according to science it is okay for a couple who is healthy perfectly healthy to try to conceive for at least 6 to 12 months sometimes it can take some time but if you are trying you are trying within your fertile period you are doing everything right and you know pregnancy is not just happening over a year then you need to see a doctor that there, there may be an underlying uh, fertility issue there both for you and your partner All right, guys that will be it for today's video i hope you guys found this video helpful uh, if you have any questions just drop it down below i will try my best to answer sometimes your questions gives me video ideas so feel free to you know ask any questions anything you're not clear about and uh drop any other comments there down below and let me just say this please do not stress yourself okay stress does not help with infertility so don't stress yourself if this math is making your head wobble then just put your phone down you can come back and watch the video later and i guarantee that you will understand it this is a very simple math you are going to understand it if you found this video helpful of course give it a thumbs up and share this video share it with a friend or a sister somebody that needs to see it I, I would really appreciate that subscribe to my channel if you haven't already so i wish you guys all the best in your ttc journey regardless of your diagnosis regardless of the severity of your condition i pray that god will bless you and your partner and uh yeah thank you for always being here i appreciate you all and i will see you in my next one bye if your cycle length is anything less than 27 days then this method will not work for you if this is your cycle length, if it usually goes between 21 to 27, it doesn't go past 27, then you cannot use this, um, you cannot use this method. But maybe you had a 28 days, maybe, maybe in the month of March, you had a 28 day, 28 day cycle, then you can use this method. Even though the rest of the numbers are very, uh, the, the rest of your cycle length are short. If you have at least one 28 day cycle in all of your short cycle length, then you can use this method. That's for somebody with a varying cycle length.